I hope that you have been thinking of me too. The way that I have been thinking of you. I hope that you have been thinking of me too. The way that I have been thinking of you. Cause you're on my mind, girl, I want to shake you down. I can give you all the loving you need, loving you need. Let me shake you down. <laughs> That's the president singing to Sharon, begging Sharon. <laughs> What's up, y'all? This is Ty. I am here to review season three, episode eight of Tyler Perry's comedy, soap opera, drama, whatever you want to call it. The Oval and the episode is titled One Rule. And yes, folks, I know I'm late. I should have had this up. Listen, I, I was, I really was prepared to have it up then a brother got tired i got busy i got children i got a full-time job i'd be singing at night i've got to have all these gigs and things i know i know but better late than never right so i do apologize i should have had this up already but here i am here i am thank you thank you but before we get into this episode i have to give a shout out to my lovely subscribers you guys are wonderful you hold me down in the comment section and the channel is just continuing to go and grow. And I do appreciate you all. So shout outs to you. I'm talking about folks like Atif. I'm talking about A. Henderson. I'm talking about Miss Jean. I'm talking about Quiet Guy. Uh, Rhonda shaking my head. Rhonda said, we don't want no hateration, no holleration in this dancery. That mean, come in here cool. None of that foolishness. <laughs> um, shout outs to Nadine Harris. Crystal Lett. I said her name wrong last week. I think I said Christian Lett or something like that. Bobby Ray, Lamont Simpson, Kryptonian Black, Savannah Rivers, Amor Dupree, R.C. Kroger, Zachary Bush, all the rest of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for always holding me down and blessing me in the comment section. I do appreciate you all. You know who you are. Now, let's get right down to this episode. The president, who happens to be the dumbest president to ever, a dumb, the dumbest television president, this character is just completely dumb. So he has Sharon in the White House, as we saw, and he's really trying to get get with Sharon. And he's it's just, that, that whole thing was just stupid and annoyed me to no end, because I'm saying... What president does this? What kind of foolishness is this? So he gives her this proposal that he's thinking she can't uh, refuse. He's like, listen, here's some keys. You can have your own car. Um, there's an account in there. There's already $100,000 in that account. I will also give you uh, stock tips. And the only thing you got to do for me is, you know, when I want to see you, I see you. When I'm going to see you, I see you. And he was like... And, you know, we have a little fun, you know, you do a little drugs. I was like, what, what is this? What, what kind of foolery is this? But, you know, I think he's thinking she's Denise's Pieces. Y'all remember Denise's Pieces, right? Because Denise's Pieces was the one she had a bank account and all that. But look what it got her off with your head. That's what it got her. But he's trying to, like, buy her like this. And she's like, she got dignity. She got class. She got grace. She said, listen, what do you think? I'm a hoe. He said, nah, you ain't no hoe because you know hoes cost $500. I'm like, well, what hoe you know cost five? These some these are high class hoes that cost $500. Because I know some hoes that you, you give them a four for four at Wendy's. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. That was ignorant. I'm sorry. That was ignorant. No, but it's true. I know. No, let me stop telling my business. I know somebody. Four for four at Wendy's. Four for four. A four for four. She you, she is all your. No, let me stop. I'm joking. I'm joking. I kid. I kid. But anyway, <laughs> Sharon was not having it. Sharon was disgusted. She's like, 
let me out of here. So he's telling her, listen, you, you don't want this proposal. I'm offering you all this money. I seen your student loans. He, he's just being really desperate. And I'm like, I'm not understanding. This must be just a game and a fetish for this crazy president. Because I'm like, this is stupid. And she's like, you know, I could expose you. He's like, you know, no, you can't. Why would you be doing this when there's already a scandal out on you with, um, what's the other girl name? Y'all know who I'm talking about, with Ellie. Why would you even be doing this? But, you know, he's a moron. He's an idiot. But long story short, Sharon is like, nah, I don't want nothing to do with this. Leave me alone. So he tell, and she said in that whole little thing you tried to pull with acting like you didn't know that Kyle brought me here. You think I'm stupid? Sharon's like, I'm not falling for that. So she's like, take me home, whatever. So he tells Kyle, you know, walk her out. Make sure, you know, we check up on her. So, of course, they're going to do those threats to her and be like, listen, you can leave, but... We'll be watching you. Basically, that's basically basically what they told him. So as that's going on, um, the first lady, <laughs> oh, poor Alan. She got Alan getting roughed up by that other agent. I don't know his name. Y'all tell me his name in the comments. I forgot his name. He's down there roughing up poor uh, Alan. Alan, they want you to kill Ellie, but Ellie, he's like, I can't do it. I'm not going to do this. So the first lady goes out there. She gets in the car. And now, mind you, this is the employee parking lot, which is not too far from the White House. The White House is right there. And here's the employee parking lot. And he and they're beating up Alan like that. Alan holding his stomach by the time that the first lady gets in the car. And she's like, listen, all you got to do is put a bullet to this whole head and your life will be good, or you're going to get your ass whipped every night. And I'm like, I'm still trying to understand why she just won't. The same guy you got beating him up, why don't you let the guy beat, beat uh, Ellie up? I don't understand. Why don't you do that? Not that I, listen, I'm not for that. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying if you're going to do that, just let, let him do it. Or let Crazy Jason, like I said before, let Crazy Jason kill her if that's what you want. But I don't, I'm not understanding the first lady's motives here. It's, it's really, and that's not going to stop the president from cheating because you see he's trying to get in where he fit in with Sharon. So, yeah, I, I, I don't get that. I, I, I don't know. It's just crazy. It's just ridiculous. I don't know. So let's move right on along, right along to Nancy and Priscilla. And so Nancy, Nancy's in good spirits with her man, Richard. So, you know, she Richard gave her that money. So she's going to repay Priscilla for the Picky's funeral, which I, I'm still mad about Picky's funeral, y'all. Y'all know how what I wanted to see. I wanted a gospel spectacle. I told you what I wanted. I wanted, I told y'all I wanted Tamla Man and singing and a bunch of carrying on, but we didn't get that. So anyway, Nancy is paying Priscilla back. And she says, how's everything going with you and Sam? And Priscilla says, nah, he not going. We not. That's done. That's a done deal. So she said, but you know, that man loves you. Mind your business, Nancy. You just got your man back. Mind your business. BJ, that man love you. And I'm sure y'all could work this out. And Priscilla was like, no, I have a rule. Don't cheat on me. And this Negro cheated on me. So we done. So she said, well, I'm thinking about you and I'm worried about you. And then Priscilla broke down and said, Glad because I'm worried too because I'm just not myself. She's hurting. She's wounded. She's hurting. She said, and I need you. I'm glad you think about me. She said, well, whatever you need. You know, she went into all that. And you know, now Miss Nancy's a God fan praying woman. Now, you know, Miss Nancy going to pray on it. Lord, why did they? I'm surprised they didn't give Nancy one of them. Lord Jesus. You know how she usually do. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord Priscilla. She didn't do that, though. I was looking forward to that. You know, she kind of does that. So anyway. Priscilla's leaving, and in walks Barry, and um, here we are with this whole thing. Nancy's still upset with him. You just wait till your daddy get here, boy, because, you know, he had a young lady in the house in the last episode. You know, he was getting it on with her, and she said, did you take the young lady home? He said, no, I walked her to the bus stop. I said, well, damn, ain't that about nothing. You done got the drawers. You can't even get the girl a Uber. You, you'd sit under the bus stop, you know, ain't late, just took it, got the drawers and see, she ain't got no dignity either. Cause you, you could at least told him late, you could at least call me an Uber or something. He banged you out 
and then walks you to the bus stop. Well, at least he did walk her to the bus stop. But Nancy is disgusted by this. She's like, what kind of foolishness is this? She said, you just wait till your daddy get here. And perfect timing. Here come Richard. What's going on here? Was Priscilla here? What does she want? And then she telling him what happened with Priscilla. Then she tells him, your son brought a stray woman in this house. A stray hoe, basically, is what she was saying. And he was like, you did what? So I kind of was siding with Barry. Barry was like, wait a minute. I done had my baby mama live in here. What's her name? Ruth. And Sharon in here. Well, what's the difference? But the difference is those were your girlfriends. There wasn't no random hookups. So, you know, Miss Nancy ain't liking that. So him and Barry have this conversation and he's laughing. Barry's laughing and his father's like, where'd you meet that girl at? Did you did you meet her on the on one of them websites or something? I'm, I'm old, but I ain't crazy. I, that scene, I didn't understand that scene. And they had this little jokey thing and Barry's like, yes, dad. He said, look, you be careful out here. You hear me? And he's like, yes, dad, of course I'll be careful. Then we go to Kareem at the pharmacy. The, so the pharmacy is... Flipped upside down. You know what, Kareem? I think you might want to close this pharmacy and go into something new. Too much be going on at this pharmacy. You done had cars bust through here. Somebody done been shot in here. Bullets have been... It's time to close this pharmacy. Go do something else. I don't know. But anyway, he comes in the pharmacy. He's like, what's going on? He doesn't see Sharon. So he calls 911. As he calls... Wait. Yeah, he called 911. And when he called 911, somehow the phone... Am I correct? Y'all correct me. I believe he called 911, but that was actually somehow the call was intercepted and it was uh, Kyle. And Kyle's like, yes, 911. He's like, oh, my Sharon is missing, blah, blah, blah. He said, hold on for Sharon, please. Now, this scene annoyed me. This got on my nerves because now Sharon gets on and tells Kyle. No, I'm sorry. Sharon gets on and she tells Kareem, Kareem. I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm cool. It's all good. It's gravy. And he's like, uh, where are you? Oh, how does 9-1 know? What? Clearly, if she's saying she's okay, why you keep repeating the same thing? Sharon, but what is going on? What is going on? I am fine. I will be there in a minute. No, tell me what is going on. That went on for like 20, 30 minutes. No, it wasn't 20. If it's felt like 20, 30 minutes, the same, he's saying the same thing over and over. I'm like, dude, she just told you she finds she's coming to the pharmacy. Relax. I, I don't really like his, his Kareem is, is annoying to me. He, he gets on my nerves. Oh. Let's move on down to Donald. Our boy Donald. Like I said, this has to be the most incompetent group of <laughs> secret service agents and whatever you want to call them. He's checking the cameras. Holy smokes, Batman. He sees that uh, Bobby was in there. So I'm like, now you see that? He's like, oh my goodness. He checks the surveillance. He says uh, that he notices, he sees that it was Bobby. He says, Kyle, get in here quick. Kyle gets in and he's like, Lily, let this dude in here. This is ridiculous. And so... What's name is like, we got to handle this. We really got to handle this. You got to handle your wife. You got to do something about that. That's what he tells him. Find him and bring him to me. Meanwhile, we find out, and I was wrong, and I think it was, let me see, I, I wrote a note. I think Quiet Guy, you said something about the vice president being in this episode. So I was wrong because I thought um, Bobby and Max were being uh, held. I thought it was maybe Sam that had captured them. Like I was, I thought it was Sam, but turns out it was actually the vice president. And the vice president said to them, listen, I brought you here because I know everything about what's going on. I know what happened to Denise's pieces. I know about the mattress. I, we believe the president killed the maid. We know all that good stuff. And Diane, remember Diane? The one that uh, Kyle killed, Diane came to me first with a lot of things and before she died he said no you mean when she was murdered and he's like listen i'm this is what i'm proposing y'all can help me take the president down he hasn't signed a bill he hasn't done anything he's an idiot he's corrupt uh victoria's father is corrupt but i need y'all help and they're like well what do you need us to do i need y'all to testify in court and he offers them seats in the cabinet or something like that because he says once we can take down 
uh, the president and all of that. And he's like, and, you know, my men could get you out of here. But he said, listen, don't go back to that abandoned house. And so um, Bobby's like, see, I told you. And he tells uh, Bobby and don't go back to Lily's house because they're on to you. And he says, see, see, you're talking about me. So then that they're being taken somewhere. So let's we're going to see where that story leads. So is it me? Is this the first time we're meeting the vice president? I think so. I just I don't remember seeing him before, but clearly the vice president and the president are enemies. I, why did y'all run together? I don't. I guess it's politics. I don't know. We'll we'll get to the bottom of that as the story progresses. Um, what else? Ha what else happened? Um, Sharon finally gets to the pharmacy with Kareem. And Kareem, is, he loves her so much, too. It makes my stomach hurt. He's so annoying and clingy. And he's like, oh, are you okay? And come with me. And she's like, listen, I can't, she, I can't tell you what happened. She said, you know, I shot someone in here. Someone tried to rob me. She's like, dude, re lay off her a little bit. I understood he was a little, he's concerned. But clearly something is going on. She's like, listen, I, right now, I just need to clear my head. And he's like, no. Are, are you hearing this? He's being so dramatic and annoying. I don't know. I just, his character annoys me. Just He's just so annoying. I just want to punch him in the face. But anyway, that was that. She tells him, listen, I just got to go. I got to clear my head. I have to think. Because, I mean, come on. The president just pro did all this, made this pro uh, proposal towards you and did all this stuff. And then basically threatened you like, listen, now, you turned me down, but we still watching you. You know, so that, that's got to be a lot. Then we move on down to... Uh, crazy jason jason is now the 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 agents are switching over babysitting jason and jason i don't understand what jason's problem is now this other agent he's picking with him and taunting him uh, and talking about his penis size and all his foolishness and have you not learned your lesson from when the other dude beat you down have you not learned your lesson but this guy's like he ain't playing he said you know, I'm from a different squad. I don't play with this stuff. And he said, yo, you guys abuse kids. And are you going to hit me like the other guy did and all this? The guy, I like what the guy said to him. He said, you know, I can put you to sleep if you don't go to sleep. You know, I have certain moves that'll put you to sleep. And that kind of scared Jason. And I thought that was funny. I thought that was really, really, really fun. All right. So now let's go on to Donald and Lily. Now, Donald comes uh, to the house. And Lily's in the living room and he's questioning her and they're making nice with each other. And he's like, you let that guy in here. She's like, you let Bobby into the White House. She's like, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, I thought he was going to try to kill her or choke her out like he did the last time. What's stopping him from killing her? I don't understand. Not that I want to see her killed because I actually like Lily. But oh, he, I thought he was going to choke her out, do something. He says to her, you know what? When we find Bobby... You're going to get arrested for having him come. I was like, what? You're going to get arrested for having him get bring a, get a pass into the White House. You're going to get arrested for that. And she's like, whatever. If I'm going down, you're going down too. But I really thought she was going to be in some sort of danger. But she was not. She was not. I thought she was going to get roughed up or something. But nothing happened to her. Then we fast forward to Alan and Ellie. My, 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 my. Alan came home. He's sore in the waist and in the midsection. And, the, you know, he's all hurt, whatever. And Ellie is not pleased to see him there. Why are you here? I told you I don't want nothing to do with you. Get on out of here. He's trying to tell a baby, you're endangered. You just don't understand. You ain't going to ask me how I'm feeling or anything. She's a cold, cold-hearted snake. She don't care about him. She tells him she pretty much don't care about him. <clears throat> so I'm like, is he going to choke her out? Is he going, what is he going to do to her? So they, after they get in their argument, she goes and lays down. He's standing there with a bat. And so I said, well, is he going to beat her to death with the bat? Like, again, why can't y'all just have the agent go in there? The same agent that beat him up. Why can't she just, he just go in here and kill her or do something? Why don't you just have, I don't know. I don't understand this. But anyway, it the episode ends with him with the bat. Does he... Or doesn't he beat her to death with the bat? We don't know, and we have to wait till next week. So this episode it was all right. It was decent. But 
you know how I like what I like from this show. I like the chaos and the foolishness to make me laugh. And um, it was a little bit of that today, but we need we needed some more. I want to see what he was going to do with her. I want to see. I also want to see Jason get beat up too, but it didn't happen. So that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.